Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm actually doing something different from tool review and car repair. I'll be swapping out the old engine on this tiller with a new Predator engine to give this tiller a new life. This tiller was bought in 2006, so it's about to turn 17 years old. The engine started to leak gas around the carburetor. It's also hard to start up. I tried cleaning the carburetor, but it started leaking again after a few months. The engine outputs 5 horsepower, but the owner says it's not as powerful as before. Also, as you can see here, the gas tank started to break down because of old age. After running for 17 years, it's probably time to proudly retire. Here, the transmission clutch belt is also worn out, so we're going to replace that at the same time. This tiller has only one gear, so it's really easy to maintain. Otherwise, despite the fainted paint, the frame and blades are all in pretty good shape, considering the age of the tiller. Since this tiller has served the owner well, we decided to just spend a little money and replace the engine instead of getting a new tiller. Now, the engine that I'm going to replace it with is this Predator 212cc 6.5 horsepower horizontal shaft gas engine. Before getting this engine, I compared the measurement of the base and the crankshaft between the old engine and this one. The measurements are very similar and I'm fairly certain that this engine should be a good replacement for the old one. This Predator engine has excellent reviews on Harbor Freight website. It sold for $159.99 original price, and I got it for $139.99 with a coupon. I then did a price match during the Spring Black Friday sale week, and brought the price down to just $99.99. The owner told me that this tiller was bought for around $700 to $800 back then, so upgrading to a brand new, more powerful engine for only $100 sounds like a no-brainer to me. Now, let's get to work and see how to put the engine on the tiller. Before doing any work I've never done before, I like to take a video of the work area to make sure I have something to reference, even on easy jobs. With that out of the way, the first thing I did was to take off the belt from the crankshaft pulley. It came off really easy because the clutch was not pressed in and the belt was worn out. Next, I identified four bolts that holds the engine down on the tiller frame. These bolts are not threaded into the base block, but are tightened down with nuts. So we need to use a wrench to hook down the nut, and use a ratchet to get the bolts out. I like to put the nut and bolt back together after taking them down, so they're always in the original pairs. With all the bolts out, we can remove the engine from the tiller. Make sure you get a good grip, and not drop the engine. There are a couple of things on the old engine that I want to reuse. The first thing is the mounting plate. The mounting plate is for mounting the transmission clutch cover. The cover will protect dirt and debris from getting onto the drive belt and pulley. There are two bolts holding down the mounting plate. They are very easy to take off. The second thing I wanted to reuse is this crankshaft pulley. This pulley seems very sturdy and is in good shape. So I'm going to reuse this. When removing the pulley bolt, you notice that the crankshaft will rotate when you turn the pulley bolt. To take the pulley bolt off, I use a groove joint plier to hold the pulley down, and then use the ratchet to loosen the pulley bolt. Once the bolt is loosened, the rest is easy. You can take it off by hand. Off we go. Let's see if the pulley fits on the crankshaft of the new Predator engine. On the crankshaft, there is this crankshaft key. As you can see here, our old pulley already has this key built into the pulley. So we don't need the crankshaft key. Just use a flat head screwdriver and pry on it a little bit to take the crankshaft key off. Now, let's put the pulley on and see how it fits. It slides in smoothly. That's great. Hmm. The crankshaft is too long for this pulley. We won't be able to tighten it down. There's a washer on the crankshaft of the old engine. Let's reuse that as well. Put the washer on the crankshaft, then put on the pulley. It seems like there's still a little bit of crankshaft protruding out. We're probably going to need to get another washer like the one we have in order to hold down the pulley so that it doesn't move around when the engine is running. We'll deal with that later. Let's prepare the tiller for the new engine and see if the new engine fits on the tiller. Hopefully, everything lines up so that it doesn't require drilling. First, let's wipe down the mounting surface to remove all the dirt. The front and the back of the mounting holes are what matters because they get in contact with the engine block. 
The other parts will get dirty again when we use the tiller. Next, let's remove this transmission pulley to take off the drive belt. This drive belt is pretty beat up, so we need to replace it. Same as the crankshaft pulley, the bolt rotates with the pulley. So, again, we need to use a groove joint plier to hold down the pulley, and then use a ratchet or a wrench to take the bolt out. After the bolt is loose, it's easier to just use your hand to unthread the bolt. With the bolt out, we can take off the pulley. The pulley is pretty tight on the shaft, so I used a screwdriver to pry on it a little bit to loosen it up. And then wiggle it around until it comes off. Now we can take off the transmission belt, out with the old, and in with the new. Putting the pulley back on is the reverse of taking it off. Remember, remember don't forget to put the key back on. The pulley will not spin without the key. Put back the bolt. Similar to loosening the bolt, we need to use the groove joint plier to hold down the pulley so that it doesn't turn. Tighten the bolt up until snug. And ready to put on the engine. At first, I aligned the new engines to the mounting holes according to the old engine. However, after I put on the pulley and the belt, I found an issue with this engine position. As you can see here, there's a big gap between the pulley and the engine block. If I push the pulley all the way in, the belt will be misaligned. And this is bad. I thought I could get some sort of washer to put in between, but it's really hard to find a washer that thick, and it's not an ideal setup. The reason it works on the old engine is that the old crankshaft already came with something like that on the crankshaft. The new engine doesn't have that. What do we do? I noticed that the tiller frame has multiple sets of pre-drilled mounting holes. The old engine uses the mounting holes furthest away from the transmission. I can try the mounting holes closest to the transmission. It seems like that's all the displacement we need to align the transmission belt, so I decided to give it a try. Align the engine to the closest mounting holes to the transmission belt. Put the pulley on. Remember earlier that we saw the crankshaft has a tiny bit protruding out that kept us from holding the pulley in place? I got a thick washer to fill in the gap. At first, I put both washers on the inside closer to the engine block. It seems like this makes the pulley just a little bit misaligned. So I took one washer out and put it on the outside. This made it align perfectly. Time to tighten the bolt on the pulley. Since the crankshaft on this engine and the old engine have different threads, I had to replace this bolt as well. Again, I used the groove joint plier to hold down the crankshaft and then tighten the bolt. Then, put the belt back on the pulley. Perfect. Putting back the transmission cover mounting plate, the holes on the mounting plate align perfectly to the holes on the engine block. That's awesome. After that, all I had to do was to bolt down the engine. Simply use the wrench to hold down the nut, and use the ratchet to tighten the bolt. Do it for all four bolts. Oh, and don't forget to put the transmission cover back on. Nice! The engine fits on the old tiller perfectly. Before we can test the engine, we need to put in engine oil and gas. There are two engine oil filling ports, one on each side of the engine. I like to use the filling port with the dipstick because it tells us if we have put in enough engine oil. This engine takes half a quart 10W30 engine oil, so a quart bottle is enough for two oil changes. Alright, that's half a quart. I see oil on the dipstick right around halfway, so that should be enough. Let's put some gas in the engine. Remember, this engine can only take gas with no more than 10% ethanol. Okay. We're ready to test it out. According to the user manual, there are six steps to start the engine. 
First, we need to close the choke by pushing the white lever to the left. Second, open the fuel valve by pushing the black lever all the way to the right. Third, adjust the throttle lever and move it a third towards fast. That's a third from right to left. Fourth, turn the switch on the side of the engine to the on position. Fifth, we pull the string to start the engine. So, mm -hmm. we've got to do the sixth step the first time we turn on the engine, which is to choke the engine. So the engine shut down after a little bit. We prime and start the engine again, and choke the engine after it started. This time, the engine ran properly without an issue. The engine started really smooth, unlike the old engine where we had to pull the string multiple times to get it started. Now, let's give the tiller a try at one third of the throttle. According to the user manual, there is a 3 hour braking period for this engine. During the braking period, we shouldn't apply heavy loads to the engine or run the engine at maximum speed. It seems to be doing a great job. The owner of the tiller seems pretty happy with it. One thing I wanted to remind you guys is that don't forget to put fuel stabilizers in the gas. Gasoline will start to break down after 30 days, and the build-up will clog the fuel line and the injectors. Using fuel stabilizer can keep your fuel fresh for up to 2 years, so you don't need to empty out the fuel tank after each use. There you have it, the Predator engine swap on the 17 years old Tiller. I really liked how easy it is to put on the Predator engine. Kudos to the engineers who standardized the engine size. This Predator engine is very impressive and definitely put on a smile on the owner's face. For around 100 bucks on sale, it's a no-brainer deal. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please consider dropping a like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching. I see you next time.